the soaring semicircle of black stone veined within magma and etched with runes seems to emerge from the earth itself. At its heart, a vortex of fire swirls and within the flames one perceives faint, terrifying faces leering outward. Screams emerge, muffled from the roiling portal. The ground surrounding the portal withers and dries up, scorched and barren. This video is brought to you by Describe, who offer finely crafted box text for your tabletop RPG game. This is the entry for Portal to the Demonic Realm, which seemed fitting for a video on Grazit. Describe has flavor text for locations, monsters, spells, and more. I use their service for my inspiration in my home D&D games, and it is fun to read out loud the exciting text to your players as they approach something like a portal to the demonic realm. A huge database with plenty of free options. Check out Describe today by going to describe.com slash Jordan and level up your game. Hello everybody, Jordan here. The PH is silent. And this is a continuation with an in-depth look at the demon lords of the abyss. Grazit's origin has been reworked in various editions. Early D&D, he was just another demon lord, not really needing a beginning or anything, but traits that have stood the changes of D&D editions are that he stands about nine feet tall with black obsidian skin, yellow teeth, and has green or yellow eyes. He has six fingers on each hand, which allowed him to count to 12 at a very early age. In 4th edition, he was believed to be a devil working for Asmodeus, a mighty general of his who led an advancing army into the abyss to conquer it. It is believed Grazit became corrupted by the chaos in the abyss. His army conquered three layers, but rather than rule them in the name of Asmodeus, he abandoned his allegiance. In that moment, he shifted from devil to demon lord and still rules those layers to this day. In 5th edition, Grazit was also a devil, and he lived in the Nine Hells, but wisened up and realized that the hierarchy of devils and the Nine Hells really only benefits Asmodeus. So he left and carved out a place for himself in the Abyss. Earlier sources state that he was never a devil and was the child of an Oberth demon named Pale Knight, who is often referred to as the Mother of Demons. Grazit refers to Pale Knight as the White Lady, and many demons do not speak of her. None or all of these could be true. It is up to you and your game to decide. Grazit, which is how I'm pronouncing it, it's probably incorrect. Uh, Grazit? 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 Grazit looks the most humanoid of the demon lords. He dresses in fine clothes and uses his seduction and guile to entertain and capture his enemies. Although the other demon lords would contest this, he is the most intelligent creature in the abyss. He has visited the material plane often and has fathered many children there. Some of them discovered who their father was and have tried to impress him. Thraxia is Grazit's daughter who makes an appearance or two in the realms. She is currently working as her father's expert assassin. Tasha of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything fame, who at the time went by the name Igwilv, magically summoned Grazit and kept him prisoner for a long time on Oerth in the Greyhawk campaign setting. She used him to study demons and the abyss, which from that came the book The Demonomicon of Igwilv. The two of them did have a son together, Ayuz, who is a popular evil presence for DMs to use in the world of Greyhawk. Grazit starred in an adventure called For Duty and Deity, which I covered a bit when talking about the goddess Joaquin. Joaquin was attempting to get back into the divine realms after being barred by Lord Eo during the Time of Troubles. She bargained with Grazit for safe passage through his realm, and in exchange, Grazit would get a secret to a hoard of treasure. He betrayed her, and Joaquin was Grazit's guest for a long time. Adventurers need to find their way to the abyss and free Joaquin from Grazit's realm, known as a Zagrat. Grazit first appeared in D&D in the 1982 adventure The Lost Caverns of So... Sojankinth? So Sojankinth? Sojankinth. So, so Kenneth. And the following year in AD&D's Monster Manual 2. 
He wasn't utilized much until that adventure for duty and deity, but he has made appearances elsewhere. He wields an acidic longsword and in some references, a large shield. As a grat, his abyssal realm, the 45th through 47th layers of the abyss, are connected by a large river of salt, which is deadly if touched. Grezet has a city that spans all three layers called Zelatar, and it's full of demons, tieflings, and some slaves who somehow were brought to the abyss. Merchants who come to Zelatar find an excellent place to buy and sell goods, but the risk of Grazit turning on them is high, despite him saying the merchants have his blessing. Varin, known as the Voice of Grazet, is his main advisor and servant, a minor demon lord with a humanoid appearance that oozes slime. He is unwaveringly loyal to Grazit. While Grazit was imprisoned by Igwilv, Varin ruled in his stead. Now, Varin can change his shape and at times appears as a large white or black slimy creature or a male Merilith. Speaking of Igwilv, I mentioned earlier the adventure The Lost Caverns of Sokaneth, which was actually Igwilv's stronghold where she captured Grazit and practiced her demonic magics. When the adventure starts, Igwilv is long gone, and this adventure is basically just a dungeon crawl to explore the caverns looking for money and artifacts. One such rumored artifact is a fabled lamp called Daoud's Wondrous Lanthorn, which I remember speaking about in my Tasha video. If you're interested in more info on Tasha, I'll put links down below or in the top right corner. This adventure really seems fun though. I, I do enjoy dungeon crawls where your players just get to be greedy and they're looking for magic and the, the dungeon is out to get them. If you run this for a D&D or decide to update it for a newer edition of D&D, it could make an excellent place to hide some MacGuffin artifact that your players need. And how cool would it be to tie it back to Igwilv and you can have Grazit make an appearance. It's really odd though, even though he's statted in this adventure, he does not appear in it that I could find. However, I personally would have him trapped in there in a, in a circle to say hello to your players. Grazit can change his appearance, but always has horns on his head. Being so charismatic and clever, this would be a lot of fun to play as a dungeon master. Imagine your party finding a trapped tiefling child who is actually Grazit in a cell or a magical circle. The slightest amount of help would unleash the demon lord, and now your players have a bigger problem than searching for a wondrous lamp as Grazit leaves to subjugate nearby kingdoms. Thanks again to Describe for sponsoring this video. Check them out at describe.com slash Jordan with a PH in the middle. That's describe.com slash J-O-R-P-H-D-A-N. Links down below. I super appreciate my subscribers, so thank you for following along this lore journey with me. Tell your fellow DMs about Grazit and let me know if your party has fought him. I'm genuinely curious. Links down below where I found all of my information on this video topic. Thank you, patrons, and I'll see you all in the next video.